Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordine, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Welcome to Testimony Tuesdays. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries, and we've got an awesome show for you today. Today's show is going to be very enlightening to so many people around the world. I'm really looking forward to how Lord, the Lord is going to move during this broadcast today. Amen. You know, today's show is going to be very powerful. So please take a moment right now and share this on your timelines. Amen. Share it on Instagram and on Messenger. Get this message out to, so that the Lord can use this message to set so many people free. I tell you, he's really going to be covering a lot tonight. Amen. So today we're going to be talking and discussing generational sin and iniquity that causes generational curses to be on a bloodline. That's right. We are really going to uh, be going into a deeper place with this on Sunday morning yes. during our Greater Glory show at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on this Facebook page. We will be scratching the surface today on this particular subject, and we hope that many of you will be set free because a lot of people in the body of Christ have been so stuck in a cycle of iniquity. And every time you feel like you're, 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 you're stepping out and you're, uh, you're, you're moving forward in an area, something seems to be pulling you back again and uh and it maybe you know you're you're saved maybe you feel like you you've got everything right with the lord on a daily basis you know you love the lord and and uh but there just seems to be like there's something in an opera in the operating systems that are going on that's running behind the scenes that seems to be controlling your outcome in life yeah you know you might be doing everything right keeping your heart clean, staying repentant before the Lord, uh, watching your actions before the Lord, you know, yet there seems to be something hindering you, something that seems to be blocking you. Come on. And as you're listening today, God is going to reveal family line iniquities. That's right. And and these are going to be th things like alcoholism and drug addictions, spousal abuse, rejection and abandonment. And um, the possibility of, of many, others many others are going to be revealed to you. Yes. So whatever the Lord shows you, write it down. Write it so down. go grab a pen and a piece of paper if you haven't already, because you're going to need it. And, and if you want us to pray, we need you for you. We need you to comment below uh, what we need to be in agreement about. So we you. can break it off, okay? Yeah, the Lord can get it, get it broke off your your bloodline. Amen. Yes. So let's get started uh, today in in our discussion topic. We we must talk about the blood, and what and, and what the Word of God says about the blood. You know, in Genesis nine four it says, "But flesh with with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat." That's okay? right. So the Word teaches us that the life is in the blood. Yes. In the first testament. Uh, they sacrificed uh, animals to atone for sin, okay? So atone means to cover. It's covering. The sacrificed animal's blood covered our sin and was a symbol of pur purification because without the blood, there would be no forgiveness of sin. That's right. Right? So Hebrews 9.22 in the New Living Translation, the word says, In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There is no other way. There's no other way but the, through the blood. Yeah. The blood, blood is the sacrifice that God requires to purify us from sin. And the Lord Jesus Christ did not carry our redemption and our deliverance in his pocket. He carried it in his veins. Yes. And his blood is holy. And is the only blood that through faith in it and the faith of, of his death, burial, and resurrection right. that saves us. Yes. Amen? Amen? There's mighty, mighty power in the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It never lost its power. Mm -hmm. It never loses its power. No. Amen. And prophetically speaking, over 700 years before Jesus was ever born in the flesh, the prophet Isaiah spoke by the Spirit of the Lord. That's right. So he said in Isaiah 53, 11 through 22, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. 
By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide them him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's right. He was numbered as a wine bibber, right? As a publican, as yeah. as a sinner. Yeah. But he wasn't. He no. was without sin. Amen. That's right. That's so right. so what is going on if we are saved and we have we have kept our heart repented before the Lord. We repent for our sins. We ask God to forgive us. You know, we try to keep a clean a clean conscience before God mm -hmm. so we have an open prayer life with him. You know, and we're doing these things, and we still seem to be struggling in a, in a way that seems over and beyond the normal battle right. between the spirit and the fleshly desires that humans have. Come on. Come on. The Word tells us in Exodus 34, 7, is, the answer is found. Come on. It says, keeping mercy, God keep God, keeping mercy mm -hmm. for thousands, giving iniquity and transgression and tr transgression and sin, and that all uh, will, will be, he'll be, they'll be cleared from guilty, okay? It says, and that will by no means, I'm sorry, be cleared from being guilty. Mm -hmm. So he he's also says that, that the iniquity visits the, uh, the, the children. Uh, it says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Come on. So it says that he's, he's keeping more for thousands yeah. forgiving iniquity yeah, okay and it right. goes on to say in numbers 14 18 the lord is long suffering and of great mercy yeah. giving and give forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation so it says it the second time That's there right. come on you know so in in a world where people do not want to take responsibility for their own actions before the Lord. They have a real problem with asking forgiveness for sins for their forefathers and their foremothers. Right. But if you want the, the cycles to stop for you and your children and your children's children, that's exactly what must take place. Yeah. We must humble ourselves and ask forgiveness for what our parents have done yeah. and our grandparents or our great grandparents and even our great great grandparents what they have done if you really want your bloodline to be cleansed mm -hmm. that's what it takes that's right and in the natural you can start you know just search and record negative personality traits such mm -hmm. as lying stealing profanity laziness alcoholism addiction to drugs lust incest vulgarity stiffness stiff neckness um, sexual issues um, and and rebelliousness toward God and um, and rebelliousness against uh, you know godly uh, authorities and 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 so on. Okay, so the idea is to to take down those personal traits, but you know in what you're seeing that's coming down the family line. So you know and and that um, that that is. The idea that we need to do because it's going to help us to understand what the familial spirits are coming down that family line. Yeah, um, right. You know, we may hear a few stories about our ancestors. However, it's hard to know the nat in the natural all the secret sins of a family line. That's, right. That's why we must go to the Father in prayer. Yeah. When we begin to to ask the Father uh, with you know with a full heart. What sin and iniquity is in our bloodlines? He'll begin to reveal the type of sin, and sometimes even opens up some family history about it in the natural that you didn't know before. That's right. And today we hope, you know, hopefully, we're, you know, we're going to begin you on a journey that will bring freedom from bondages that are in your bloodline. That are bringing hindrances to you. That's yeah. trying to rob your inheritance. That's trying to stop your prophetic destiny. It, the devil does not want to see you go into your full prophetic destiny. He wants to rob your destiny. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? So just as we inherit our mother's nose or our father's eyes, we may also inherit our mother's narcissism or our father's alcoholism. Come on. You know, unrepented sin can leave a spiritual weakness toward that sin in a family line called iniquity. Mm -hmm. Just as diabetes 
looks like in the natural they can leave it leaves a natural uh, a physical weakness toward diabetes in that family line it's it's really the, a spiritual issue that's right okay yeah so the definition of sin is missing the mark by breaking god's laws and standards for living holy the, living holy living that's right because he said <laughs> the lord said be holy Come as on. i am holy Come on. amen yeah. and through the power of the holy spirit if we're truly led by the holy ghost mm. the lord empowers us and gives us grace mm -hmm. to to live a holy life amen. amen amen and if we mess up we have an advocate with the father that's right jesus never makes intercession for us but he does empower us if we amen. lean on him amen thank you lord so that's that's the definition of sin is missing the mark yeah um and missing god's standards and law of laws for living but the definition of iniquity is a generational deviation from god's divine plan that causes a sin cycle that brings a curse because there's consequences god Come says on. there's going to be consequences that's right okay mm -hmm. and that's why we are reading those scriptures in exodus and numbers mm -hmm. you know so it says because of you know because of sin in the generations the iniquity of that sin can be passed on to the children that's right you know and there's there's two different things now a parent can commit a sin such as um occultic involvement or uh sexual sin that produces a curse on a family line and and the curse then causes a generational iniquity or or a weakness to pass down that family line mm -hmm. and the best example that i have found as i've been researching is this it's think of a pregnant woman that is x-rayed and the unborn child becomes deformed by that x-ray the unborn child didn't order the x-ray mm -hmm but that child is completely a victim of the x-ray and it's affected by it okay on the larger scale mm -hmm. sin is like that x-ray it damages generations that go after that's right Come so on. what you do is not just about you are that attitude of you be you and i'll be me and uh, live and let live mm -hmm. and i'm not going to worry about what my brother or sister's doing and mm -hmm. or my mother or father or or the children i'm not going to worry no you can't you cannot be like that because okay. what you do is going to affect more than just you right. okay mm -hmm. so this should put the fear of god in you and cause all of your one of us to think about our actions because what you do or you don't do in this life will either bring blessings or curses on your family line that's right so what does the the living word say about sin and iniquity so in jeremiah Chapter 31, verse 29, it says, In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Come on, that's an iniquity. Come on. Being, being set forth to the children. That's right. And speaking of the Lord, we find in Jeremiah 32, 18, that it says, Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Amen. Come on. And Lamentations 5, 7 says, Our fathers have sinned and are not. We have borne their iniquities. Come, Come on. on. So then we have one more to consider, and it's found uh in the um in isaiah so the prophet isaiah said in chapter 14 29 or 21 prepare uh, slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers mm -hmm. that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities come on wow so that just shows you that that they back then they used to wipe wipe well, god would order them to wipe them all out that's right you know so in and why and why mm -hmm. because those iniquities were coming down the family line yeah and if they just brought more and more cities and multiplied and multiplied the sin would continue in the earth come on that's the why the flood happened come on right so <laughs> this should be a sobering for everyone that's listening okay in the book of first kings we find that david's sexual sin king david's sexual sin and the command to murder uh, Uriah, 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 I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Uriah, was was really the cause of, of King David losing a portion of his inheritance. That's right. Um, David, you know, he loved the Lord and he was a great worshiper and he mm -hmm. got the attention of God. However, he struggled. And um, and a lot of Christians, they think that, well, if I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm Holy Ghost filled, I can't have problems like that. 
Um, right. That's not true. No, okay. Right. right. So this is, we 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 uh we will struggle with our forefathers' iniquities unless we can get the things broke off. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So David David said in Psalms fifty one five, Behold, I was I was brought forth in iniquity, mm -hmm. and in sin my mother conceived me. Mm. So he was saying that my mother was in sin when she conceived me. Right. Come on. Yeah. So how could David, such a man of God, be so susceptible to blatant adultery? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it was the iniquity, the spiritual weakness of, of sin in David's lineage that could be tracked three generations back. That's right. King David was a direct descendant of Rahab the harlot. Mm -hmm. And we find that in Matthew 1 verses 5 through 6. And this sexual sin did not stop with David. We also see that at least two of David's sons were affected by sexual sin. And this constant influx of pagan wives and concubines uh, in Solomon's court eventually led to his downfall as he began to hold the blessings of God in contempt and began to worship false gods. Come on. Ammon was another uh, one of son, David's sons, mm -hmm. and he lusted after his own sister Tamar and eventually committed incest with her. And the iniquity of sexual sin was ongoing in King David's bloodline. Mm -hmm. Something else that we need to consider is that the, these sin patterns of iniquity, generational curses, will keep us from moving in the timing of the Lord. That's right. So we've got to move it. We've got to get rid of them. That's right. So notice in this scenario with David and Bathsheba, the real issue was in the time when the kings go out to battle, David stayed home. Yes. Right? Yes. And the sin pattern moved David out of God's timing and position and kept him from his apostolic kingly function of warfare and protection over a nation. That's right. So we got to ask ourselves, has the enemy been using patterns of generational iniquity to move you away from being the watchman on the wall mm. to praying through on your prophetic words to to move you out of position to receive what you have been believing God for, come maybe on. for years and years, yeah. right when it's time to receive it, the enemy will come mm -hmm. to tempt you to get out of position, mm -hmm. to tempt you so that you can't receive what God, what you've been pressing for. That's right. First there, you know, with David, first there came a spirit of complacency. And it was like a, it was a satisfaction. You know, that type of spirit gives us such a satisfaction for where he was in life, okay? He fell into a, a spirit, spiritual slumber. And the spirit of complacency wasn't the iniquity of David's bloodline. But it cracked the door so that the iniquity of sexual sin could cause him to fall. God, you know, is God opening your eyes tonight? I mean, I hope so. I, you know, I'm hoping that your <laughs> eyes are getting open. Because that spirit of complacency is like a warm, co cozy blanket. Yeah. It'll make you slumber and think you're not falling. It'll make you think that you're not backsliding. Mm -hmm. But you're not You're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Listen, God's always moving forward. That's right. So if you're not moving with the spirit of God, you're backsliding. Yeah. Because he's moving and he's leaving you over here. Yeah. Okay, so a spirit of complacency makes you feel comfortable where you are in life. And it stops you from, from doing what you're supposed to be doing. It gets you out yeah. of, of your placement with God. Yeah. So after the enemy, after, you know, the enemy is, you know, he, he, he did that. He, that, that spirit cracked the door open for the, that sexual sin to happen. Because the enemy is after your inheritance to stop your God-given destiny so that you will not realize full fulfillment, full prophetic fulfillment. And at least, um, at last, you know, you know, we, we really want to cover about strongholds. We want to talk about strongholds today. Spir a spiritual stronghold is a mindset impregnated with hopelessness that leads us to accept the unchangeable situation as, as unchangeable situations. It makes us think um, what we know and believe God can change. Mm -hmm. It makes us think that that situation is unchangeable completely. OK, yeah. and we know that that's contrary to the, the to the word of God, and yeah. the will of God. Strongholds are built, uh, built in the believer's mind by Satan so that he can manipulate behavior without us, you know, knowing that he's doing it without right. being detected. That's right. So if you want to identify hidden strongholds in your life, you don't have to look very far. No. So you, you only need to survey 
the attitudes in your heart. That's right. Come on, did you hear that? Your attitude. Attitudes in your heart. So every area in your thinking that shines with hope in mm -hmm. God is an area which is being liberated by Christ. That's right. Right? But any system of thinking that does not have hope, which feels hopeless, is a stronghold which must be pulled down. You got to pull Come it down. On, right? So, so strongholds are a mindset. Yes. And that's what we need to remember. Strongholds are produced by accepting a lie from the enemy. That's right. And it Come doesn't on. matter how cunning the devil was in presenting it. Once we accept his lie, we fall into sin eventually. Usually it could be happening right yep. quickly after that. That we that it'll and it'll produce a stronghold. Mm -hmm. It'll produce a mindset mm -hmm. to keep you from obtaining what God has for you. Yep. Amen. So, you know, and these strongholds can affect entire families through means such as superstition right. or mocking God or mocking the word of God, uh, unbelief, idolatry, we worshiping of idols, okay, mm -hmm. or even atheism. Um, and, and just that's just name a few. Yeah. Okay. That strongholds are there. It's a belief system. So it can affect all whole families and come down that family line, and then be reinforced by actions right. of the people of the people and, and their and the way they communicate mm -hmm. and act. So the, these thought processes and mindsets can be so entrenched in the minds of family members that until these strongholds are torn down, it it becomes impossible even as christians to mm -hmm. walk into into the full destiny that god has for them that's right okay that's right so paul exhorts in second corinthians 10 3 through 8 he says we are human but we do not wage war as humans do we use god's mighty weapons not worldly weapons to knock down strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments strongholds or mindsets mm -hmm. pulling them down we destroy every proud obstacle that te that that keeps people from knowing god and we capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey christ come on that's right this is how we use the authority god has given us to wage war on the enemy over the souls of our family members mm -hmm. the soul is our mind it's our will. It's what we will to do. It's what we're setting out to do. It's our mind. It's our will. And it's our emotions. You would say maybe it's my heartfelt heart feelings. Okay. Right. It's your emotions. Yeah. And, um, and that is your soul. And it, and it is the place where decisions are made. Mm -hmm. And so Paul goes on to say, and after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Come on. <laughs> you know, look, when we come back, we come back with Jesus Christ. We're coming back for war yeah. on the disobedient That's that, right. are, that are unsaved and would not accept Christ. That's right. That is in our Bible. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is what this is about. So it says, look, he goes on to say, mm -hmm. look at the, um, the obvious facts. So I mean, we got to look at the, that's what it says there. In, um, yeah. I'm sorry. In second Corinthians 10 through eight. Yeah. So we've got to look at the obvious facts here. Those, those who say that they belong to Christ must recognize that we belong to Christ as well. Yeah. Just as much as they do. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I might be seeing, he, he went on to say that he may be seen boasting, uh, too much about the authority. Paul said I was, he was, might be seeming like he was boasting too much about the authority that was given to him by the Lord. But, but he says our authority builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. So, so I will not be ashamed of using my authority, Paul said. Hmm. Okay? So we shouldn't be a, a, ashamed of using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or the, uh, the blood of Jesus because there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's, there's power available to us by faith through the blood of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. And this is beyond our initial salvation. It's available to us beyond salvation. We, however, must choose to appropriate the power, just as we did when we first came to the Lord to be saved. Yeah. You know, see, salvation was available to us, right? But we we were not saved until we came to him. That's right. Believed in our hearts and confessed with our mouths that he is the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's through the power of Christ's blood that we can exchange such things as curses for blessings. Yeah. Things like guilt to, for purity. Sickness for health, 
lack of provision for every need being met by the Lord through Amen. faith. Amen? Amen. There, There is also another exchange that the blood of Christ can accomplish for us. As we ask the Lord, he will reveal, he'll release, he'll reveal the things, but he'll release the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse our bloodline of generational sin. And, and that his blood supersedes our blood to our bloodline to bring us back into his full plan for our lives. Amen. 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 So, I mean, we I love this verse in Joel, Joel uh, chapter three, verses two, uh, 20 and 21. It says, but Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Amen. He gives us authority, but our, uh, but our bloodlines, are only cleansed by the precious blood and the power of the blood of Jesus. Come on, absolutely. So, we just want to take a minute and say, if you live in or around Southeast Virginia yes. or Northeast North Carolina, we encourage you to get to one of our meetings Amen. as we uh, are able to come together and pray for you in person. Amen. Okay? We invite you to come. Amen. Because th 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 what we're doing here, it's not a formula to obtain the breakthrough results. Okay? Remember, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. The Lord said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, yes. saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. So remember, what happened to those that merely thought it was a formula in praying uh, to bring forth breakthrough, um, we have a warning in a story uh, of, of the seven sons of Sceva, right? Right. In, in Acts 19, 13 through 20. And, and it tells us that then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. <laughs> Come on. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. And Paul, I know, but who are ye? Come on. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Come on, are you hearing this? And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And the fear fell on them all, the scripture says. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Amen. Come on. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. That's right. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them, right, before yes. all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Come on. Come on. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Hallelujah. You, you must know him. Yes. This is not a formula for prayer. No. You have to walk with the Lord, being led by his spirit. You know, and we're going to close with this before we go into prayer. The Lord Jesus Christ said in Mark 16, 14 through 16, after he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and unbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after, his, after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Come on. Come on. Amen. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we want you to do is ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart and your soul for any unforgiveness that you have towards someone. That's right. Okay. You must forgive those who have trespassed against you. It's very important that you do this. You will not be able to walk in true freedom unless you're able to forgive. So this is the principal thing in praying for freedom from generational 
iniquities. No sin. They might not deserve it in your in your own mind to be forgiven. Right. But you weren't you didn't deserve to be forgiven either. We didn't deserve it. But it was through the grace of God mm -hmm. that we're all saved. We all fell short of the glory of God. Yeah. We've all needed God's grace. And a lot of times people have a hard time forgiving. And and it's really like drinking poison mm -hmm. to your own body, your own self, your own mind, your heart, your your whole future and you're expecting the other person to die from the poison that you're drinking that's right because unforgiveness is like a poison it's deadly and uh the lord says he, he can't he won't free forgive you unless you forgive them amen and so you're really not freeing them you're freeing yourself mm -hmm. uh more so and um and let and just give them to god let let god be the judge of their heart and their motives and uh, and freely forgive them yeah. and you will be able to be set free if you don't forgive you won't be able to be free from from anything that's right it, it, you're, you're stuck right so just take a few moments and 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 um and think about the people that you need to, to jot down that you need yeah, to forgive. just jot their names down okay and just go through it and say lord i forgive so and so that's right and i forgive so and so mm -hmm. right? That's right it's not for their sake it's for yours that's right because you're going to be set free here that's right so take take a second do that right now stay it out loud i forgive whoever it is come on yes it sometimes it can't be easy i forgive my parents lord i forgive right. my brother whoever I it may my be sister. I right. forgive this person at work. I Amen. forgive that person who really hurt me. Yes. I, I forgive that person that molested me. You yes. Know, that that, that Come person. On. I mean, it could the be. The tough things we have to forgive. I, I, you know what has happened in your life. Right. But it's time to lay it down. It's time to give it yep. to God so that you can be free. Right. Amen. 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 So you must forgive. Amen. So now we're going to do this. We're going to recommit okay Amen. right yes we're going to recommit our lives to christ right mm -hmm. now yes we've forgiven we've asked uh for to be forgiven mm -hmm. and we forgive those that have trespassed against us so right now we're just going to say lord jesus lord jesus come into my heart come into my heart from this day forward from this day forward i confess you i confess you to be my to be my lord and savior lord and savior i recognize i recognize that you are the son of god you are the son of that god. you rose again that you rose again and you live and you live in in heaven in heaven and are seated and are seated at the right hand of god the father at the right hand of god the father come on and that i'm asking I'm asking for you, for you to inhabit my heart. To inhabit my heart. So today, Jesus. Today, Jesus. Live. Live. Inside of me. Inside of me. And I thank you. And I thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in I pray. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I amen, pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. Come Hallelujah. On. We must rededicate our lives. We and have to it away rededicate from God. our lives. Amen. If you've never received the Lord as your personal Savior until just now, you know, congratulations. Yeah. Because when we are saved, or even when we rededicate ourselves, so we've fallen away, yeah. come back. But when we when we get saved, our name gets written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's right. It's that that minute, that moment, and yeah. that, that day. It's recorded in heaven. That's Amen. Right. Amen. So we're we're gonna we're gonna pray for so many uh, people today, and this recording is going to continue to go out, and people uh, all over the world whenever whatever hour of the day is listening mm -hmm. they can uh, agree with these prayers and be set free from right where you are um when we we go into prayer when we get to the part and say paternal uh we're gonna be we're gonna be breaking off the soul tie in the the father the father's bloodline and the mother's bloodline in the area of that iniquity right so when we say paternal we want you to say we want you to be saying your uh your father's last, last name, name. Yeah. And then when we get to maternal, we want you to say your mother's last name. Mother's maiden. Maiden last name. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so as we begin to pray, um, that's what we want you to do. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we begin to pray tonight, we're going to set some boundaries for the enemy uh, corporately. Okay. Yes. And, and then call out the different areas of generational iniquity. So please join in in the prayer with us. To yes. break the soul ties in the areas of these iniquities so that they're broken off yes. of your uh, bloodline. Okay? Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So we're going to we're going to go into it right now. <clears throat> Satan and every demonic spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and by the power and the authority of the blood of Jesus we tell you that you may not remain here mm -hmm. in their house where they are you may not uh, stay on their property you may not come to where we are. You may not come into High Tower Ministries or anyone that's connected with High Tower Ministries. You cannot touch any bird or, or any animal. You cannot hinder their property or themselves or their families that are in their on their properties. You cannot come into this ministry. You cannot even touch R RWC or anyone that is connected with RWC or their families or their, their ministries. But you must go back into the family lines from which you came. You may not, you may not uh, go forward into any child or any grandchild, but you must go back to where you came from in the family lines. And that's the only thing you can do. And we set these boundaries by the power of the blood of Jesus and the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're, we're, um, look at our, our comments there. I know that we've got some, um, some folks that need to be set free of addictions and compulsions, um, addictions of, of alcohol and drug addictions. Uh, and we're going to start with that because it's very common also. Uh, to that people are struggling in that area so any type of alcohol addiction or drug addiction is, is called pharmakia spirit it's a pharmakia spirit and so we we've got we're going to break that right now so in the name of the lord jesus christ anyone that is suffering with alcohol or drug addictions we ask you to be in agreement with prayer with us right now so lord father we just right now break the soul tie in the paternal and maternal line. So you say your, your mother's maiden name and your father's last name in the line in the area of pharmakia. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we break its grip and hold. We break that power of that spirit in that area of compulsions, addictions, and pharmakia. And every spirit that is associated with that pharmakia spirit spirits of rejection spirits of fear we command them to go we break the soul ties and we send them back in the family line and they cannot come forward we break the power of the spirit of rage anger and hate we break the spirit of dependence on a substance dependence on substance abuse in the name of the lord jesus christ we break the power of shame we break the power of guilt we break the power of evil, false images. We break the power of false images of themselves. We break the power of crisis and stress off of their life. We break the power of, of uh, unclear minds, unable to make decisions. We break that power, uh, that spirit of compulsion. Every spirit that is connected to that, spirits of, of hurt and wounding, uh, spirits of false reality, um, fantasy we break the power of those spirits right now off of them in the name of the lord jesus christ the soul tie and we send them back into the family line we break the power of fear and we break the power of failure off of them off of their bloodline we break that soul tie we break the spirits that are connected to this soul tie of pharmakia compulsions addictions we break the, the spirit of pressure and, and res, uh, a fear of responsibility even. We break, that, we break that off of them and we cast it off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just lose the power of the Holy Spirit to bring truth. And we break the power of manipulation. We break the power of, of intimidation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just lose the power of the Holy Spirit right now to bring healing. To bring health, to bring wholeness, to bring clarity of mind, to let faith arise. Lord God, cause vision to come where they can grab a hold of fresh vision for their future, Lord. Lord Father, they would see you the way that you created them to be. That the vision and the story that you've written for them over their lives, Lord God. That they can grab a hold of what you have for them, Lord God. Oh, Lord Father, we just loose that by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we seal that to them. We seal that to them. 
and it cannot be opened by any other aspect in their family line. We seal it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a few things that we're Amen. going to be praying about specifically here. Oh, yeah, but, it, but, but we want you to understand that this does not break the soul tie of love and blessings from your family line. Amen. Only the areas of iniquity that we're praying about. That's okay? Right. So don't think that we're we're trying to break the the soul ties of, of love family. of family and blessings of, of the good things. Amen. But we're trying to get rid of the things that are keeping you from walking in your divine destiny. Absolutely. That the Lord has for you. Absolutely. Okay. So right now we have a request for someone um, that is <clears throat> underneath of uh, a, a, um, a a generational curse. I'm assuming of um, mental illness that's causing a spirit of suicide okay. to come upon them okay. and they're actually in the hospital right now so we uh we right now father god we just thank you father yes Lord. that you have stopped father in time to save this man's life first of all, any type of harm that the enemy was trying to inflict on him in his life to take his life from him to cut his life short because we have to remember this, the, I'm not sure the age of this man, mm. but when when a murdering spirit or a suicidal spirit comes on someone, it doesn't only take the life of that person, but it takes the life of the generations to come. And it also, if there's already children or grandchildren of, of, of a person that has a suicidal spirit that comes upon them, it, it can be passed on as a generational Curse. So we're going to break this off right now yes, in the Lord. name yes, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So right now, in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, these same boundaries are set here for this spirit of suicide, even the spirit of abortion. Uh, if anyone is contemplating abortion right now, it's the mm. same spirit. We bind up those spirits. And, uh, and we just, we, the, the same boundaries are set. So we break the spirit and the power of the paternal and maternal in, in a family line, that bloodline, in the area of suicide and abortion right now. We break its power. Those spirits have got to bow to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the power of the blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. Yes. And we command you to take your hands off their mind, will, and emotions. Take your hands off. And we command those spirits, go back into the family line. We break the soul tie of suicide. We break the soul tie of abortion in the paternal and maternal and of the family line. And we send it back. And it cannot come forward. And we seal that. And it cannot be opened by any other aspect of the family line. We're telling it it cannot come back. And uh, we're also breaking off the, those spirits that are associated with suicide. But before I do that, I just want you to repeat after me. If you're committing, if you're, if you are thinking of those types of thoughts, if you are uh, thinking of even having an abortion, we need to just lead you into some prayer right now. Just repeat after us, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me for, for talking, thinking, accepting, or planning suicide. And today I choose to live and not die. Tell the Lord I choose to live and not die. And eat the fruit of the land. Hallelujah. Yes. And I call back and under the blood of Jesus, my thoughts and my words and the plans that I had and my actions. And I say the blood of the of Jesus cancels any ongoing attachment of sickness, disease, accident, death, and dying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you to take their hands off. He comes out of agreement. They take come out of agreement with you with their thoughts and their plans and their actions. And they are now under the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over their minds, their will, and their emotions, their whole being. And that death is not going to be their portion. And not, not a premature death. No accidents. 
No disease or sickness has come nigh thee. Nothing that's going to harm them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And saying, we notify you right now that you cannot touch them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And, and we also, uh, we declare right now that the enemy, that no spirit uh, um, uh, or, or power or principality can keep you or someone that you're lifting up right now that is being uh, afflicted with the spirit of suicide mm -hmm. from, from being cut off right. communication-wise. Mm -hmm. So we say all lines of communication for help and, and restoration be opened up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that, you, that either you will be able to reach out for some help or that if you're lifting someone up that oh, yeah, you're about, about, that yeah, you're about, praying about. for them right now because they're going through something that mm -hmm. they would answer the phone that yes. they would open the door yes. that they would accept help that their heart would be open mm -hmm. right now to receive Jesus yes and and the love that he has for them yes. that he has for you Oh, so yeah, we yeah, decree yeah, and we yeah, declare yeah. an open line of communication right now yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be opened up. Hallelujah. Open up. Open up. Every cycle of, of suicide, cycle of abortion, a cycle of not murdering having spirit. murdering spirit that has no regard for human life. Mm -hmm. we, we That cycle is broke. That bloodline broke. curse is broken over you right in the now. name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. You are free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes. And we just we just speak peace over you right now. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Yes. And so right now we speak to your mind that your, your mind is filled with godly peace over flooding you right now from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Lord Father, we thank you that you are manifesting your presence right where they are. Lord Father, they feel your love wrapping them up, Lord Father. That your presence is coming on them, Lord Father, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. They can feel you tangibly yes. right now. Yes, yes. We, we command that atmosphere to change. And, and that every demonic presence that's in that, that room where you are or has been around that room, we command them to flee now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. And and we just loose the power of the Holy Spirit to bring perfect peace to your mind. And that the atmosphere is permeated with the presence of God. And that the angels come to minister to you. That they will minister the word of God to your spirit. And that you will have sweet sleep. And you'll be able to rest. Every tormenting thought, every hindering spirit, every tormenting spirit that has uh, caused you to have not no peace is gone now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We cancel that cycle of repeated thoughts of the enemy that he has lied to you and caused you to think that you were they, they were your own Amen. thoughts. We command them to stop and that God begins to break forth through the you're hearing that you're hearing the Lord's voice you know John 10 10 says I came that they might have have and enjoy life and have it in abundance God is, is come to give you abundance of life amen and he wants you to have a good life and he has a good future for you and so right now we just ask God to release a fresh vision for your future that you can dream again and that you can grab a hold of your destiny that God has written for your story Everything that has come again bombarded you in life to make you feel like you are hopeless. We bind up that spirit of hopelessness Amen. off of you. And and the God, God our Father is giving you hope. He is pouring hope into you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we seem to have um, a lot of people in Hightower Ministries that, that contact us um, that are taking care of, of orphan children. So I, I I feel like we need to pray mm -hmm. um, to break that spirit of that abandonment. that abandonment spirit yes off of the children that are already in the orphanages mm -hmm. and also off of the mindsets of the adults yes that are having these children yes and that can't take care of them for one reason or another yes and you know not every orphan. Um, is is subjected uh, to becoming an orphan because 
their parents can't take care of them. Sometimes it's tragic, yes. and they lose their parents, That's and we right. realize that. Yes. But, but we want to break that spirit that says that I don't have anybody. Or I'm not good enough. Or I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. That changes that right? changes their identity. And that they were would be able to recognize that they are a child of God, that they have a big family. Yes. Amen. And that they can create their own family once they're grown up. And that they can produce a loving family Amen. of their own God, here on earth. That's right. Amen. You know, Jesus says that I'm the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. You know, if you've got Jesus, you've got everything. That's right. Amen. So let's so, break off that spirit are, of. We want to speak off rejection. Rejection. I, you know, that I, that identity that's false and contrary to what God has said over each human life. Right. Amen. Yeah. Each, each child. Yeah. And um, and that fatherlessness, uh, not understanding their their father in heaven because yeah. they don't have their earthly father. That's right. That's showing. The good uh, example, right. right? Yeah. So, um, so the same boundaries are set over those children and yes. these adults, even that have suffered uh, of being given up for adoption, or maybe even abandoned, or have um, lost have their parents. Lost their parents, even. Okay. So, um, but we're dealing with rejection here mainly, and yeah. um, identity, Come and on. fatherlessness. Okay? All right. So, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We break off that spirit of rejection, that demon of rejection. We break off that, that sin iniquity that has to do with rejection, that spirit. We break off the soul tie of rejection. We break off the soul tie of, of identity that is a false identity and, and fatherlessness. We break that off of the children and we break it off the young and old. Yes. In the in the the maiden name, the the uh, the maternal and the paternal, so the father's line bloodline and the mother's bloodline, we break the soul tie right now of rejection, of of ident a false identity, identity issues, and fatherlessness, um, abandonment. Abandonment, come on, right? Um, that orphan spirit. Yeah. We bind up we those bind spirits up. in the name of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. We cut those soul ties off. Mm -hmm. We send them back in the family line yeah. where they cannot come to this person, to these children or grown and or grown ups, even alike, or or come forward to the children and the children's children of the future. Yes, come on. But they must go back in the family line in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind up those spirits. Yes. And we shut down every demonic work that that tells them that they're not good enough. Spirits of rejection, spirits of unforgiveness. Toward their parents, even um, for spirits of bitterness, uh, the spirit of defeat and jealousy, the spirit of of false accusations. We bind up that spirit of criticism. We bind up anger. We bind up the spirit of suspicion. We bind up the spirit of deficiency. We bind up the spirit of strife. We bind up the spirit of failure right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind up that spirit of self-pity even that just halts a person and doesn't allow them to get forward in life. We bind up that spirit of, of uh, depression, heaviness, and self-hate even. We bind up the spirit of fear and we bind up the spirit of loneliness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command those spirits to let go. We command them to go back into the family line and not come forward. We command them to loose now yes. in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. You will not have victory over these people and these children. And we just lose the power of the Holy Spirit to bring perfect truth about their identity. Yeah. Lord Father, that they are fully loved. They're fully accepted. Fully accepted by you, Lord. Fully loved, Lord. Fully known by you, Lord. Lord Father, we, we loose the power of the Holy Spirit to bring healing to their hearts. Healing to their souls, Lord Father. That you would heal the soul wounds right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In their minds, will, and their emotions. That they would not have a broken heart. But they would have a full heart. Full of joy. Lord God, we just loose the power of the Holy Spirit to bring forth joy and hope. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We seal that to them now. This is sealed by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. And it cannot be opened by any aspect in the family line from this day forward. Come on. And we Hallelujah. speak that every need will be met. 
for these children. Yes. And that the people that are taking care of these children in the orphanages and in the homes, that every need is met. That's right. That provision runs ahead. There's no lack. There's clothes. There's blankets. There's food. There's Bibles. Yes. There's teaching materials for school. Everything that they need. Everything they need. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we pray. pray. Amen. People, Amen. you know, we, we are to help one another, yes. Yeah. And we are to be the hands and feet in the earth. Mm -hmm. But we've got to keep our eyes focused on the one that really is our provider. Yeah. You know, the Father says, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certain people are not your provider. It's the Lord. Amen. And he can send a complete stranger to knocking on your door to That's drop right. off exactly what you need. Right. Uh, at any time. God Amen. can send an angel to you. Yeah. He has his angels all around us. The Lord says, be careful how you entertain strangers. You, as you might be entertaining angels unaware. Come on. And we've had our encounters. That's right. So Amen. Our our true provider is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Father God. Yeah. And, and you know, it's our God. And we have to have an ear to hear mm -hmm. because the Lord may have you you go to a certain location at yes. a certain time, yes. and it's because he has a purpose. You know, There's just, somebody going to be there. Just be quick to obey the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because you just never know. Amen. And that's happened quite a few times, too, that's right. to other people that we even know. Yeah. That if they didn't get out of their bed at 4 o'clock in the morning and go down to the, to the waterfront, they wouldn't have got the answer they needed. Come on. Come on. We, yeah. we hear about it time and time again. Yeah. So, um... God has brought people right to our front door. Praise the Lord. We don't know there were angels or not. That's right. So remember, Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. Yeah. Keep your eyes focused on him and he will meet every need you have. Yeah. Amen. Reach out to us because this is a process. It's a process. Come on, we're, we're just starting here. Yes. And we encourage you uh, to, to get connected to, uh, to a local ministry. If you're not anywhere in our uh, area that we're, we're meeting in here in uh, Southeast Virginia or Northeast North Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, get connected to a ministry. That's right. You're so, you're so right. Yeah. Because a lot of people are, are taking people through deliverance, but they're not encouraging them to get connected. Yeah. You really need to get connected yeah. uh, with a, a Holy Ghost filled ministry that can pour into you. You need, yeah. you need to be under a covering. Yeah. And, um, and you you need discipleship. Come on. Okay, and we need we need accountability as well. Yeah. yeah. So um so it's very important because you've got to get the word in. Keep getting the word in. You need you need other people around you that are strong believers that can encourage you when you're having um, some hard times. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we we thank you uh, our viewers for joining us here with High Tower Ministries International for our Testimony Tuesday's broadcast. We're yes. so happy that you're with us today. And uh, we hope this show has edified you and encouraged you in the Lord. Come on, reach out to us and share your comments with us, please. Yes. If you have any personal prayer requests, please send them to prayer requests at HightowerMinistry.org. Amen. And uh, get connected with our ministry. You're going to receive a free download just by going to our website and registering your email. It's free. And you get a free download sent right to your inbox that will really be a great blessing to you and your family or anyone that you want to send it to. It is a, a wonderful download that explains our identification with Christ, why Jesus is the only way to be saved. That's right. Amen. And if you really enjoyed this show, make sure you get back on with us on Sunday morning. Uh, nine o'clock eastern standard time so check that with your time zone because we'll be going we'll be going further. a little bit further into this message yeah. uh on sunday morning amen look us up on youtube and subscribe hit that bell and don't forget we have broadcasts that go out four times a week right here on facebook look for our greater glory prophetic teaching every sunday morning at 9 a.m and 7 p.m and wednesdays at 7 p.m and each and every tuesday we have Testimony Tuesdays, Amen. right here, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss the show. Uh, you, you can also catch us on our podcast. You can take us on the go with you. Uh, you can uh, Google us at High Tower Ministries Podcast. It's free. Uh, or anywhere you listen to your podcast, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcast, iTunes, Audible, or WDN Shows. So take a look at our podcast and start listening. Amen. We invite you to like us and follow us on Facebook. So you don't miss a show. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to share, share, share this message. It really does help distribution out around the world. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the High Tower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 
For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for Hightower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.